It is an intergovernmental organization. Right? Uh, so the sovereignty of each government, as well as each country, is preserved. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not a union. Um, there's no surrender to a central authority of uh, any sovereign rights. Uh, there is an agreement to proceed in terms of cooperation. Now, now these agreements, do they have enforcement authority or not? No, right? Because it works on a consensus, it doesn't want to, you know, sort of uh, slam down on a particular government, even identify them. Uh, so that he's been moving in this time of consensual fashion. I don't see it changing uh, in the next two to three years. You know. However, despite this consensual fashion, it has moved forward. So just imagine if there was some, hey, one morning somebody says, you know, we want to surrender and, and have uh, a certain centralized uh, authority to do certain things, uh, it will move even faster. But short of that, what's the, the most important thing to do right now is to ensure that the ASEAN Secretariat becomes more effective as an engine uh, that drives the ASEAN leaders to move faster, to fill some of the gaps faster, to get certain agreements faster. Now, the problem is the ASEAN Secretariat is weak. It is weak because it is understaffed and underfunded. It is underfunded because the contribution to its budget uh, has got to be the same among all 10 ASEAN member countries. So the lowest com common denominator the country can afford, that sets the mark for how much can be contributed. Uh, it's, I think, 1.7 million US dollars a year or something. It's just, you know, a pittance against uh, the, the mammoth uh, work load and, and, and task uh, before the organization. Although ASEAN Secretariat doesn't have supranational uh, authority, like the Commission or, or European Commission or anything like that, it doesn't. It is still the engine, you know, that, that comes up with proposals. Which, one, what the leaders say they want done, they ha it has to, to, to come up with workable proposals, push it back to them. It's, the leaders are the highest decision-making authority, whether the presidents or, or, or prime ministers and so on. But it starts with the secretariat. It moves to the senior economic, in terms of ASEAN economic community, senior economic officials who are in the various ministries. Then it moves to the ASEAN economic ministers, you know, and then it comes to the leaders. So if that input, if that engine is efficient and you have good people who are well paid to drive it, then you get better traction uh, in the movement forward. So the, I think to try and reform the secretariat and doing fundamental things take years. The best thing is to say, what is an objective that we can achieve? What is the objective that we want to do? How can we achieve this? Okay, they still want each individual country to give the same amount of money. Okay, fine, you, we can't disturb that. All right, can we have special projects funded uh, to, to, to go through the secretariat, to pass through to the leaders to make those decisions? Uh, the ASEAN Business Club at its last uh, ABC forum in, in Singapore, just last September, we suggested, and we are putting, going to put this forward in the next uh, few weeks, that you have special expert groups come in, help the Secretariat, how it is funded to be outside the budget of the Secretariat to push certain ideas. And one of the most important areas that should be pushed through in terms of ASEAN movement ahead is, I think, uh, financial services and capital markets because that is the lifeblood of the economy. Uh, that's the lifeblood. And if you have better integration of financial services industry, banks, and of the capital markets, you know, talking here about stock exchanges 
and bond market, then many of the objectives of real of the real economy you know, can be can be can 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 be can progress. Uh, you take infrastructure, which is you know, the, the need. Uh, enormous need in, in every country, particularly ASEAN countries. Uh, some studies have shown that it needs uh, something like 2.4 trillion US dollars worth of infrastructure investment, uh, I think, uh, in the next uh, 15 years up to 2030. You're talking maybe about 60, 70 billion US dollars infrastructure investment. Are we going to get that money? Uh, from how you're going to generate the savings that exist, you know, uh, within the ASEAN region, outside the ASEAN region, and how are you going to pool this, pool, pool, pool these savings into infrastructure projects, either through debt finance uh, or, or through equity finance? Where is the liquidity in the ASEAN markets uh, to attract this? And people talk about governance, you know, in, in ASEAN countries. You know, transparency, uh, accounting standards, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of work to be done. So you want to integrate markets. You have level up the standards you know, to, to bring about this attraction. I have a particular, a particular uh, romantic uh, uh, notion, romantic, not romantic notion, a particular idea which I, I am very, uh, which will not solve all the infrastructure problems, but uh, could help in raising, you know, infrastructure finance, or what I call infrastructure project listing, uh, without track record. But you would not want to list an infrastructure project without track record on. I don't mean, uh, you know, to to to. To, 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 to criticize well, on the Cambodian stock exchange, let's say. Right. Whereas you might want to, you might think, think to, to do it both in terms of issuer and investor, let's say on the Singapore stock exchange, you know, which is more liquid, which is larger and so on. So if you can have, there are two things that are going in terms of integration of, 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 of capital markets. There's, there's something called the ASEAN Capital Market uh, uh, forum. Yeah. So where all the regulators meet and say, oh, how do we integrate our markets? Uh, how do we have common uh, trading, uh, common trading platform, common settlement platform, etc. Et and then they identify what are the differences in the levels of, of, of disclosure, accounting standards, enforcement, capability, you know, inf uh, regulatory structure, etc. Now, you sat down like that, you discuss these things, you do make some progress, but you make very small progress. Because when I tell you your oh, accounting standards are too poor, old oh, chap, you must, you know, bring it up, you're not going to like it, you know, really. You're going to feel aggrieved, you know, this guy is so, he thinks he's uh, such a, you know, super duper chap, you know. And so it doesn't move as, as, uh, as well. Whereas if you offer someone, something real. Now, if you sign this document here, right, you can get your infra infra uh, infrastructure project company listed, let's say. So you are the home country where the infrastructure project is taking place. And if I also sign, I can be the host country for that infrastructure project to be listed. Now, the, but the requirements for that to happen are A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You want, you take, you don't want, you don't take. So you can have something like that offered. You don't do it fine, you do it good. But if someone does it and people notice it happening, the demonstration effect of such a thing can generate greater interest, greater commitment. So make real things happen, then demonstrate their benefit and people will come you know, uh, into, into, into the pit, so to speak. So that kind of approach, I think, is something that should uh, also be undertaken by ASEAN. It's voluntary. You don't, you're not forced to, to do anything, you know. You do it. This is how, I mean, I've had an a academic Parsons uh, sense, what they call the functional 
theory of inter integration. So it was uh, theorized by a man called David Mitrani, you know, in the interwar years in Europe. And it is based purely on functional benefit. Uh, that's how the postal union, uh, telegraphic union, and so on came about. You know, it's, everyone had an interest in having commonalities to ensure certain good things happen, you know, between them. So there's these kind of things uh, that, that, that ASEAN should also be, you know, looking at. Having great big blueprints, good. Plans, action plans, good. Governments making decisions, good. Secretariat should be pushing, you know, other ideas as well. You know, to, to make things happen. So, you know, if there is this kind of dynamism, you know, this kind of uh, uh, this kind of reactions, you know, this kind of interactions, and we can move it even further and faster.